Good evening. Good to see you. I hope you have had a good day today. And uh, didn't get a chance to give you a, a rundown of my shirt last night. I forgot about that. Got right into the message. But tonight I am wearing my Scaled It Like a Boss t-shirt. And just so you understand what that means, because not everybody might follow it, is uh, obviously I've done um, uh, CrossFit uh, for many years now, about six years. And uh, in the CrossFit world, there's a lot of uh, abbreviations and language that a lot of people don't understand. Typically, a workout, will you'll have a workout and there'll be uh, what are called RX weights. Think of like a prescription. RX is your prescription. So the prescribed rate, the recommended weight, and you'll have a weight for men and a weight for women. And, uh, and then if you aren't able to do those weights or those movements, you can scale it back and you're doing the workout scaled. And uh, I pretty much never did uh, an RX workout for men. I usually would do all the women's weight. I used to tell people I was just like a really strong girl. And, uh, but uh, anyhow, so I found, uh, Jen got me this shirt, scaled it like a boss, and uh, just, you know, kill the workout uh, with scaling down weights. And uh, of course, I live by that now with uh, some of the injuries I've dealt with. Uh, but uh, anyhow, uh, this shirt is kind of representative a little bit of what we're going to talk about tonight of, um, um, uh, you know, scaling things back or really my message, my thought is, uh, content with uncomf with being uncomfortable. And I'm going to talk to you out of a passage out of Philippians chapter four. And I'll read a few verses to you. Uh, I've got, my, I'm going to look off to the right here where I have the, uh, uh scripture pulled up on the computer screen. And uh, I want to make some applications to some of the things we're dealing with. But I'm just going to read four verses to you, starting in uh, Philippians 4, beginning in verse number 10. The Bible says this, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye also were careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want. And now here's where I really want you to dial into what's being said. For I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, to both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Well, there's several really interesting things here that I think we can uh, pull out for our own purposes and the purposes of our church and or wherever you're at in your life. Uh, but uh, uh, what we see here is that Paul learned to be content uh, in a less than a desirable condition. He was in jail. As you know, that's the context of Philippians. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we need to, as Paul learned to be content in an uncomfortable environment, so must you and I learn to be content in an uncomfortable environment environment. And we might have to let God teach us some things. This isn't just natural. It's, Paul's not saying, yeah, I just had this from day one. Like, oh, man, I'm, I'm cool with anything. Doesn't matter what happens. No, he says, I've learned to be content. And you and I are probably finding ourselves in some situations where we too must learn to be content. For some of us, not all of us, but for some of us, we're stuck at home. And after a while, that gets annoying. And we're, we're away from work, which has financial ramifications. Uh, we're uh, away from friends. Uh, uh, for, you know, we're, we're, if you got kids at home, like, you know, I know you love them, but man, after a while, they, they, they're just kind of annoying for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like some of us, a lot of us are having to do school at home. Some of you are not, you ever, you, you've never done that before. So you don't know how to teach the kids. And you don't know how to, uh, you, you know, you don't even know uh, the, what they're learning. And uh, you're trying to remember what you learned, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And uh, I was, you know, I'm good at math, but I don't remember all the equations. So Sam, she's in ninth grade now. She's got some, some equations. And I'm like, ah, I just, I don't remember. Like, it's not that I can't learn it. I just don't remember the equations exactly. I have to go on YouTube real quick and jo it jogs my memory. But, uh, you know... Uh, we're, we're find ourselves in, in situations that are uncomfortable. Let's take it from a church perspective. Uh, you know, 
we're, we're in a situation where, you know, we're limited to 10 people for service. The governor just came on uh, today and extended that through May 4th. So that means that that's the whole month of April um, that will be limited to 10 people in a service doing live stream. So now you're talking uh, six weeks uh, at, at a reduced rate, really, and, and even you have to go back uh, three weeks is when our services started being affected it was three weeks ago. So at a minimum, at an absolute minimum, that is two months, okay, that our, our church's services are affected. Well, we got to be content with that, all right? Uh, this scenario right now, uh, right now I, I'm doing three services on Sunday, and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, Sherry, we're over in Philippians 4, I see your, your question there, Philippians 4. But, uh, um, so... You know, we're, we're, we're in this situation where, you know, I can only get 30 people in a service uh, a week uh, into services. So three services, 10 different people each service. And basically, I'm having to rotate people. I can't fit everybody in. And, you know, I'm going back and forth about expanding services or, or why, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm just letting the Lord guide. I, uh, you know, I, I uh, let, right now we'll stick with the three and, and we'll see what it is. But, but point is, is that, that's an uncomfortable situation, and it's not something we're used to, but we have to get comfortable with it because it's going to be here for a while, because think this thing through. This is how I think. Okay, so we have a 10-person limit through May 4th. Well, it isn't like they're just going to peel back everything on May 5th. No, I'm expecting that uh, certain businesses will be able to open back up, and there might be, uh, uh, you might go back up to the 25-person uh, limit which still hinders us greatly. Uh, let's say a few weeks after that, they go back to the 50-person limit. Well, so now we're creeping up on June. Well, 50 people, that's still Lifeline Baptist Church. We have 120 every Sunday morning. So that doesn't work. The reality is, is that it's probably going to, if all goes well, we're looking at, at late June, early July, before uh, our services get back to normal. So you know what we need to be? We need to be content with being uncomfortable. We have to be content with not being able to operate as we have historically. And the, I, Paul goes on to say, I have, uh, that he goes on to say in verse, uh, let's see here, where is it? In verse uh, 12, I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Lifeline Baptist Church is abounded. Man, God has been so good to us. We have just seen people saved and baptized. The church has prospered in any number of ways. We, yes, we've had our challenges, but God has been so good to our church. We have abounded year after year, growing each year, and, and that's exciting. So now we need to know how to be abased, to go down to, to nothing. And to be very basic. And and there's going to be some struggles. You know, 10% of our church is laid off. And and uh, I praise the Lord for the offering this week. It's phenomenal. I mean, uh, but but I also know that that uh, certain people stepped up. That, and, and that's not a sustainable model. And so there's going to be some challenges that lie ahead for our church financially. And every church is going to have those struggles. That's not unique to us. So we're going to have to learn how to be a base. We're going to have to peel some things back. We're going to have to make some tough decisions. And, and, and so, uh, you know, there, there's a, uh, this idea of knowing how to abound and how to base is how, know how to win and know how to lose. Know how to be successful and know how to not be successful. And I believe Lifeline Baptist Church has had a really good spirit. Uh, we don't present ourselves as knowing everything because we don't. All right? We do what works for Lifeline Baptist Church at Haverhill, Massachusetts. I can't speak to anybody else I, for on anything, all right? So we do what works for us. And some of our things are atypical, but they work for us, and that's wonderful. But we need to uh, learn how to, um, you know, struggle. Look, the reality is, you know why? Because our whole country is, gonna, is struggling and is going to continue to struggle. And, and, and the reality is, is the next few weeks are not going to be good. And you, you have to just kind of prepare yourself up here that these next few weeks, particularly here in Massachusetts, are going to be pretty unpleasant. I mean, my word, 33 people died uh, today. 33. 
that that's 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 horrible and that's probably just the beginning of what we're going to be looking at in our state and you know that's disturbing and you know can i say this this is no one's fault it's not the president's fault it's not our neighbor's fault it's not work's fault it's not church's fault it this is no one's fault we live in a fallen world and these things thank the lord don't happen every year or every decade uh, you got to go back a hundred years for something like this but they happen and this social distancing that we're doing it it does not prevent people from getting sick it just slows the rate of infection uh, the CDC has been very, very clear about this. I think I listen to people and, and, and I think there's a misunderstanding. All right. The social distancing is not going to stop people from getting infected. They're going to get infected. It's just stringing it out over a much longer period of time. And what that does is it saves lives because it allows our medical community to give proper care to people as they come in. They're not overwhelmed. It allows there to be sufficient uh, uh, personal protective equipment in place without using it all up. There are uh, enough uh, uh, other medical devices to care for people. I'm not a doctor, I just read, okay? And, and so this, this thing though is coming and, and we need to learn how to mentally process it, this abased thing that and he says I know how to be abased I know how to go through a tough thing as he did and we can too so the question is well how can you and I be mentally prepared to go through not personally uh, and maybe it could be personal this could be very personal but even if it doesn't affect you or anybody in your immediate family how can you go through mentally when there's this over Overwhelming cloud that's hovering over society as a whole. What can you do? Well, we can do this. We can have the proper mental attitude that is uncomfortable. This is an uncomfortable feeling that we have when we consider what's going on in our world today. But we can have a proper mental uh, approach to it through Christ. In Philippians 4 verse 13 it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me, which means that we can have a proper mental approach to this great tragedy that's happening in our world. Now how can we do that? Well, first off, we don't want to be calloused to what's going on. Uh, there's plenty of people on the internet that are completely calloused and insensitive uh, and foolish to the things that are going on. But simultaneously, we don't want to live in a, a life that we are overcome with fear and grief and paranoia. And, and there's this, this middle ground. The Bible calls that temperance. All right? It's this even keeledness that is not too far to the left or to the right, but is right down the middle. And that's where we need to be. So, how can we do that? Well, we can do that with the power of God. We can do that through our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and look, the reality is this, is the longer that we spread this thing out through social distancing, and that's what it does, it elongates the time that the virus is around, the more we're inconvenienced, but the more lives that are saved. And there is no value that you can put on the life of an individual. The Lord Jesus Christ gave his life that man might be saved. And he puts the highest price on the soul of a man. I understand people are concerned about the economy. I'm concerned about the economy. I'm concerned about our people's jobs and their livelihood. Truth be told, I'm concerned about our church and it uh, functioning. I've, uh, uh, you know, I'm concerned about these things. But none of it is more important than the soul of a person. All right? Every person deserves life and life more abundantly. And every person deserves the opportunity to receive Christ as their Savior. Yes, death is inevitable for all of us. But if there's a way to preserve someone's life, particularly one that does not know the Lord, 
to give them another opportunity to receive Christ, then we ought to be willing to do whatever. We ought to be willing to stay home, to be inconvenienced, to struggle, to be abased, that they might have an opportunity, that they might get a chance. Because the more we get out and about right now, the more people get sick quicker and the more that overloads the healthcare system and the more that uh, good people um, uh, really struggle. Look, uh, doctors, nurses, they got a tough job right now. Don't envy their position at all. And, and so, you know, we, we need to um, consider this, that we need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that's not enjoyable, but it is necessary. And so in your life, you've been affected. All of us have been affected some way. There's nobody that's exempt. But right now is the time to just scale it back. Simplify your life. Enjoy, enjoy the time uh, that you, as best you can. If you're able to be at home with your family, enjoy that time. If you're schooling your kids, well... I don't want to say enjoy that time, endure that time, all right? Um, if, uh, uh, you know, if you're laid off from work, hopefully unemployment comes through for you and things get worked out and you're okay, and hopefully you can get back to work. I know business owners are, are struggling, but uh, listen, the reality is we're all uncomfortable. Don't freak out about it, but get comfortable with that. I've talked with a couple different people uh, in the last two days, and and... Uh, I've gotten some kickback to my public uh, communications of this thing's going to be here for a while. And I understand that people don't want it to be. But what we want doesn't dictate the future. And I look at it objectively. And I've told people, look, I hope I'm wrong. But as I look at the history and I look at uh, uh, the pattern we've already seen and we look at other countries and what's transpired there, um, I don't see how I am. This thing's going to drag on and, and we'll, through Lord willing, through May, have restrictions lifted and hopefully there's no flare-ups. Because if there's a flare-up later in May, once the restrictions are lifted in early May, if you start having flare-ups by the end of May, beginning of June, well, now you kick in more restrictions and we come right back to where we are. And then it's going to be a while longer. Now you're talking through June, there's restrictions again. And then you peel it back in July and then in August. See, I bear in my heart that Lifeline Baptist Church could be affected all the way through August. Now, I hope that's not the case, but I prepare for it. Why? Well, that's my job. God put me in charge of Lifeline Baptist Church, and under His leadership, I have a responsibility to prepare our people for what could happen. And if we just start acting like uh, nothing, you know, it's, it's oh, everything's going to be better in a couple of weeks. No, it's not. And anybody, anybody who's thinking it is, is not paying attention. I am not a news watcher, uh, but I'm watching the news on this one. I'm reading articles. I'm looking at scholarly journals. And, and I'm trying to be as informed as I can be because it's serious. And I want to prepare our people to be prepared, to be uncomfortable. we got to be content with being uncomfortable. And in the end... When we're done being abased, I believe will abound. Listen, good talking to you tonight. You guys have a good evening. Lord bless you. Bye now.